They had it, folks. Little John out in the brewery. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a uh, quick chat. Uh, basically, what I want to do is have a little chat about these two items. Yeah, we should all know what these are. <laughs> should definitely know what that is. Hydrometer. Um, unless you've just started brewing, brewing, unless you just started brewing in the last five minutes, then you should know what that is. Um, and you should have one of these of some kind in your, in your brewery. Uh, whether you kit, extract or grain, doesn't matter. Uh, this bit of equipment, a little bit different, you may not have it, a refractometer. A uh, bit more um, bit more specialised, not something that everybody has. But uh, I've seen a few things uh, just recently, um, and I thought I'd sit down and have a little bit of a chat about these two. Um, just quickly touch on why we use them, how we use them, um, and when you can't use them or why you shouldn't use them at certain points in your brewing. But anyway, before we get into that, and anything more, I'm going to put my tonsils. But before that, or before everything else, shout out to Little John's Patreons. Uh, thank you guys for your support. Links down the bottom if you're interested in having a look what it's all about. If you aren't subscribed to Little John, hit the subscribe button down there in the corner. Ring the bell, get notified when there's a new video coming up. Generally there's two videos a week. Brew days, tastings, reviews, testing, experiments, rants. It's all there. Check it out. Uh, but either way, whether you're a Patreon, a subscriber, a non-subscriber, hit the like button if you're here and watching. Keeping myself so far. Hydrator was the uh, Starterado Pale Ale. But anyway, I said, what I want to quickly talk about is these two fellas. Um, and I said, and the difference in when you when and how you use them. Uh, and the thing that's brought this up is that you see quite regularly um, the same thing I've seen today on uh, Facebook page, and that's someone having trouble with their final gravities on their beers, uh, where their beers are finishing high, um, and. You find all these different answers, people running for all these different things that could be causing a high gravity. You know, match temperatures, convergence, efficiencies, yeast health, yeast numbers, oxygenation. Um, and again, today, as you see, in, in, yeah, you know, in so many of those cases, um, the issue comes down to this bit of gear um, because somebody has taken readings with this uh, and it's throwing them out now let's talk about this fella quickly refractometer what this is for um, it is designed to take a gravity reading from a small sample of your wart um, and gives you the same reading that your hydrometer does it just measures the amount of sugar in your wart. No. The big advantage and the beauty of this this fella is it gives you an instant reading uh, and your wart doesn't need to be chilled down to 15 or 20 degrees you know, down to that temperature where your hydrometer is calibrated and needs to be to work. These work at a much higher temperature range so they're good for doing readings on brew day and that is where they are brilliant and it's where they come in their own and it's where it's what I've got mine for. Uh, I got over having to take a sample, you know, 
during the mash, pre-boil, um, having to stick it in the freezer and cool it down and wait yeah, 20 minutes for it to cool down so I can get a hydrometer reading or cool enough so I could then make an adjustment on, a, on um, yeah, for, the, for the numbers. This fella, simply by taking a little yeah, a little sample of the wart, yeah, you squirt it onto the bloody, onto the little red panel there, and you only need a couple of mil, and you look through the bloody thing, you see me, you'll see me on burrito and burrito vids, this fella out, sticking, yeah, looking like a pirate, down, looking down my periscope, uh, and checking out the gravity. And it gives you an instant reading. Uh, and I said, you're only using a couple of mil, you're not wasting beer, which is one reason why people like them. Um, but the main thing is that quick reading. Now, you do need to be aware, you see on there it says ATC, Automatic Temperature Correction. So what the blurb tells you when you're buying one of these things is, is that it will automatically correct the reading for the temperature. So if it's, a, if it's had a higher temperature, it doesn't matter. Um, in my experience, that is correct to a degree. I find that beyond 65 degrees, they can get quite... They're still ballparking your figure, but your number starts to get skewed um, by anywhere up... Well, I've seen by anywhere up to sort of five, six, even seven points. Um, Below that 65, and they're, they're pretty good. Um, so what you find is generally while you're doing a mash, your temperatures, yeah, you're in that mid 60s range. Um, so it's pretty good. You can take a mash sample and, and just drop it on and you're getting a fairly accurate reading. Um, if I'm doing a boil reading, I tend to just take my little sample and I just sit it in a cup, yeah, for a cup, for, for three or four minutes just enough to sort of, because it's such a small sample, you know, the air temperature just it, it brings it down fairly quickly, and then you can get a quick reading. Um, and that's no problem, wait three minutes to get that um, during a boil, if I'm looking to see whether I need to adjust gravity with, you know, more water or with, you know, dry malt or sugar or, or you know, some dextrose or whatever. Um, it gives you a quick response. Uh, so, really good on, on brew day um, I never rely on this completely to be fully accurate um, I will still always take a hydrometer reading of the final brew going into the fermenter and get my starting gravity from that um, just because I put more faith in this thing to be accurate completely than I do on this number um, even though this is calibrated with water the same as the hydrometer, uh, I've just found that sometimes I get a diff I do get a slightly different reading on this than I do on the hydrometer. But for checking progress of your mash and your post your pre-boil numbers and that, it's fine. It, it, it's getting in that ballpark. You know, I know if I'm looking for a 10.44, I can look at that. It might give me 10.42, might give me 10.46. But I know I'm in the range. I know I'm, I'm in that sort of place I want to be. If I'm looking for 10.44 and I was telling them I'm at 10.30, then I know there's something wrong. I need to I need to address it and need to address it reasonably quickly and not have to wait. Yeah, that 20 minutes for that sample to come through, where I'm then not getting a reading on what I'm looking at right there. And that is one of the beauties of this. It's a reading on what you're looking at pretty much straight away. Not where you were 20 minutes ago. So that's great brew day when you're hot side. This, not so great hot side. But once you start getting things cooled down, then this number is fantastic. But where this really comes into the same for brewing, and this is where the subject matter comes from is once you start fermenting because that will give you a reading of the amount of sugar in that wort whether it's 
totally unfermented, 20%, 50%, 75% fermented, or completely fermented. It's going to give you an accurate reading of the amount of sugar in the wort. Um, of course, allowing for CO2 bubbles when you're taking your reading, but that's hydrometer you know, 101, which isn't what we're here for today. Um, I'm looking at this and thinking I'm developing a hairline crack around the base. Uh, this one's lasted me a while now, so it wouldn't surprise me if it's showing its age. But fermenting, this is completely accurate. Once you ferment, this thing becomes skewed because there's alcohol in the liquid. Because it's taking So it's measuring the sugar. What it does is the light is coming through the liquid, runs through the prism, and it takes a reading. Alcohol in the wort upsets that refraction of the of the light um, and puts this reading out. Okay. Now you can use a calculator, um, and there's a method of going through of calibrating this with alcohol, um, which is a little bit fiddly. Um, and I've, in all honesty, I've, I haven't tried real hard, but I've looked at it and I just thought it's just too much fucking around for me. Um, when, especially when I'm fermenting, I'm not, fer I'm not fermenting at 50 degrees. I'm fermenting at, yeah, generally, between, yeah, 10 and 20 degrees. Uh, where this fella works quite happily. Um, even at 10, I know I can pull a sample out, stick, this, stick the hydro in. Um, by the time I've gone and poured myself a beer and found my notes and, you know, fiddled around for a couple of minutes, the hydro sample's at room temp, and I'm getting an accurate reading with that. Where that's not going to. So, as an example, fermenting beer, you might get... A reading of 10, 10 15 with your hydrometer. This fellow might tell you it's 10 28, 10 29. And with that calculator, you can work out that okay, allowing for alcohol, you get, you're going to get the number. Um, but for me, that calculation is still a little bit iffy. It's based on you know, scientific numbers and uh, calculating things correctly. Um, and I'm not really that confident that me calculating it is going to be completely right. But I know if I stick that filler in a tube and my samples at room temperature, I'm getting an accurate reading. Within a worst level of inaccuracy, two points. Um, where I can't be confident that I'm not being, you know, maybe four points out with that, even with the calculators. So That's the big difference, and as I said, this is where people have these problems. They're buying this refractometer because it says simple, it's easy. People say, oh, you get a refract for taking your gravity readings, they're simple, it's easy, but it doesn't tell you when you buy these things. I've never seen ever mentioned in the actual blurb of any of these things being sold or in their reference material or in their instructions that says the alcohol will skew your reading. Um, so the average Joe at home just goes, yeah, I'll stick my wort on there, whenever it is, pre-boil, post-boil, mid-ferment, and this is going to give me an accurate reading. Because this is what the professionals use. Um, granted, this one cost me about 40 bucks. Um, I'm pretty sure a professional model costs hundreds. Yeah, they're not using the same level. Um, so they fall into that. And the one today particularly, he used the hydrometer pre-ferment and then used this during the ferment, um, which is generally, which is completely the opposite way of how you really should be using these two implements. Okay, so, hope that's cleared something up. Uh, if, you're, if you're looking to buy one of these things, um, pointless if you're not doing mash brewing or at the very least like extract boils 
where you need to check your gravities. Um, but they are a good bit of they are a great bit of kit um, if you are doing grain and extract brewing uh, for keeping track of where you, where your progress is. Uh, well worth every cent. They save you a lot of mucking around on brew day. Just don't use it to <laughs> take a measurement on your ferment. That's your fella. Your hydrometer. Um, and more than that, buy a decent one. Now, again, this is a quarter, a third of the cost of this. Yeah, this fella will cost you any, you know, anywhere from eight to, you know, eighteen dollars, depending on your brew shop um, and exactly the brand. Um, this is an Allo brand, which is out of France, which I've used um, pretty much the whole time I've ever, ever since I've brewed. Um, so for the last, you know, for 30 years, um, and they've always been fantastic. They're highly accurate. Um, everyone I've ever had reads perfectly on what, you know, 1.000 uh, in tap water. Um, so. If you just go, want to go old school, you want something that's accurate and simple, go with your hydrometer. No problem at all. Never, not going to set you wrong. That fella for brew day. No, that's it. That's your differences. Where you use them, where you don't use them. Uh, so, if you've got any comments, any questions, down the bottom, as per always. Um, with a thumbs up to all the uh, Patreons, all the subscribers, all the supporters of Little John's channel. Thank you guys very much. Uh, but that's me. I'm done. So until I see you again, we're uh, brewing beer, drinking beer, or we talking beer. Good brewing.